Hi there, this is Tammy with Tammy Stamping Therapy. Today I'm coming on with chapter five or six, I'm not sure, but I'll have it in the description below, of my Stamping 101. Um, today I'm going to talk about two-step stamping. Two-step stamping is when it takes multiple stamps or images to complete your image. That I know that sounds kind of weird, um, but... And there's also three-step stamping, but I think what I'm doing today is, well, it could be called three-step stamping. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to use this jar of flowers stamp set. And you can see that it's got this solid image and an outline image. Um, this is a jar, so to put water in the jar, you'll use one of these two images. And then the flowers are separate. These together all make it two-step stamping because you're not stamping one image all at once and being done with your image. So let me show you what we're what I will show you how to make today. This is the card I created. And there's the inside. And I stamped the flowers. And then I stamped the jar. It just so happens that this jar has a matching punch. So I stamped this on scrap paper and cut it out. Uh, punched it out but um, and this is also going to be a like a beginner's coloring video because I'm going to show you on my zebra card I showed using the colored pencils the watercolor pencils and so today I will show you a different way to color with the watercolor pencils what we did before was just scribble with them and I didn't add any liquid or anything but so I'm going to show you how I make this card for my little card kit here I've already stamped the envelope. I need thank you cards, so the cards that I created today, I'm making them into thank you cards. Um, I am using this paper. This is called In Good Taste, and I really like these boards, the way they work going across there. So I'll do the easy stuff first. I will put this together. Uh, it might be time to get a new bottle of glue. So as always, my card is five and a half by four and a quarter, and I like the tent fold cards, so this is four and a quarter by 11, and then I've scored it and folded it at five and a half. Doesn't take very much glue, because glue bonds the paper together. Um, tape just sticks it together, glue bonds it together, so that's why you'll get a much better stick when you use glue than if you use tape. So let me see what I did next. That's the easy part. Um, I'm going to stamp this jar on this this piece of Whisper White cardstock. I'm stamping the jar using Pool Party ink. And I'm going to show you a fun thing about these stamps when I get to the next part. Um, so just stamp and you notice I just tap that on there. And uh, with clear stamps, sometimes you need a pad underneath. And sometimes you don't. With an outline, I don't usually need a pad. If this was a solid stamp, I might need a pad underneath it to make it work right. And then the next thing I'm going to do, um, fun thing about these stamps, and you can tell this by looking at the case. See, it's got an outline and a solid, and an outline and a solid. Well, there's not two stamps in there for each one. You turn the stamp over depending on which way you want to stamp. So this is the same kind as what I just stamped, but when I put it on the block this way, then I get the solid image. And I don't want this to be really bright like that is. I want it to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to do what's called stamping off. So you stamp off once on your paper and then stamp on here. And I don't know if I can get get this lined up perfect because I can't get my head in there, but so there it looks like there's water in that jar and see how dark that would have been if I put that on there it would obliterate the other stuff that's in there and then I'm going to close my ink pad and I was going to punch it out but I missed a step I'm going to stamp the stems if you can see there's flower stems in there I'm going to stamp those also before I punch and they're flat on the top, the stamp is. So I know that that needs to go at the top. 
I'm also going to stamp that off once because it's really dark. Let's put that in there. And now I'm going to punch this out. And when I'm punching something, especially if I want to line it up, I turn my punch over so I can see what I'm doing. And that looks good. I'm going to punch that. So there's my jar. Um, next I'm going to stamp my flowers. And for the flowers I'm using Cajun Craze ink. So I'm going to stamp them on... Uh, I didn't cut out that piece. This is the inside. I missed the piece. That's okay. That quite often happens to me. So this piece is... Two and three quarter by four and a quarter. I'm going to have my paper cutter right there. Four and a quarter. And two and three quarter. And I'm first going to stamp my flowers on here. Like like this back here. And I kind of look, they kind of have like a straight edge there so that I want that to be down, I think. Like that. I'm also going to, on a scrap piece, I'm going to stamp just this one flower right there. As you can see on here, I cut it out and it makes it gives a little bit of dimension. I've already stamped my thank you. So it looks like I'm done with my inks. So the next thing we're going to do is color. And I used colored pencils, as I said, on the zebra. So we're using colored pencils. I have Daffodil Delight, Pumpkin Pie, Cajun Craze, and, Craze, and Old Olive. And then I have two blender pens. A blender pen has some kind of liquid in it that I don't know what it is. But it takes the watercolor pencil and kind of spreads it out a little bit. It's kind of like using a paintbrush with water. But you have way more control because this has a fine tip. And the liquid isn't flowing and it's not over abundance like it is when you're watercoloring. Ouch. So to, to use this, I just put a little bit of color. It doesn't take a lot. This, with these pencils, they are like one of the easiest ways to color because you don't have to be precise. Well, watercoloring isn't precise anyway, but these pencils are very forgiving. And I'm just, um, I don't even have to color every petal because... Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I was trying to remember what color that flower was. I don't have to color every petal because the color is going to stay in the blender pen. And it will let me color in other places. And see, it's just messy coloring the way that I do it. And do I need to? Yeah, these guys. I think that's it for that color. And then the green, I'll do the green in the leaves. And I'm not done. This I'm not going to leave it like this. I'm just adding some color. And the centers are Cajun Craze. I don't have to color this flower because I'm going to stack one on top of it. So then I'm going to take a blender pan and I need to be sure which color I've used it on before. They're, they have two tips. It's clear liquid. I've used this one on yellow before I can tell. Um, and you can keep brushing it off until you get rid of all the color. If you only had one blender pen, you could do multiple colors with it. Although I would probably keep um, light colors and dark colors separate because it would be hard to get the dark out. And this isn't supposed to be perfect because it's watercoloring. So I'm just going over it all very quickly. It 
that's all the yellow. Oh, I forgot when I was stamping. I need to stamp the inside. My husband just left to go to the store, so I have peace and quiet for a while. Um, if I can't get my videos done on Friday, I have a harder time because there's a lot of noise. Even though there's only two of us, there's a lot of noise that goes on in this house. Between the pets and the husband, there's just a lot of noise. See, I'm just really quickly scribbling this in here. There is nothing precise about it. But that is the amazing part. Stampin' Up! used to sell pastels. It was like chalk. Years ago. And I loved coloring um, with the blender pens with chalk. It was my favorite way to color. But sadly, they left. So I had a set for a long time. I think I finally got rid of them. Yeah, I kind of wish I still had them. Because for a long time, I was only using stuff that is current as far as our Stampin' Up! catalog goes. But I decided I want to use what I want to use. So I'm not going to get rid of something if I love it just because been retired. So I think this one, see I can't remember, I should have marked these in some way. Which tip I used for what? That one looks brown. So that one I'm going to use on my Cajun craze. So then I'll get rid of that. Looking for my green. If it cleaned so well, I can't tell where the green was. So I'm going to keep cleaning this a little bit more. It's got yellow in it. So that my green will stay greenish. But also, because I stamped with um, a dye-based ink. It's also picking up a little bit of the uh, Cajun Craze ink because it's not meant... Oops, I missed that. It's not really meant to color this way, but I'm making it work. So what color's on the other end of there? I don't know. I missed this one. And all that's left is my pumpkin pie for this flower. So that's all of my coloring. <clears throat> now I'm going to add this to my card. A lot of times I would add another, another layer in here, but I do like the way this looks. It's like it's against a wall. <clears throat> Put this inside. my jar to my card using Stampin' Dimensionals. I only need two. These little guys are pain in the hiney. They stick to everything. But I'm going to put this on here. And you can see I raised it up a little bit, but when I put the bow on there, you're not going to be able to see that. Um, oh, and it's crooked. I mean, it's not crooked, but it's not in the middle. So, rip it off, start again with my dimensionals. So 
I did it sideways, I was like way off. That's better. Now I need to cut this out and I need to get some new spring loaded scissors for fussy cutting. Um, these are what I have that work the best, but I really want to get some more of the spring loaded ones like I used to have. When I'm cutting out a flower that's got all these points on it, I first go like this and just cut around the points. And then I'm going to go in and cut out all those little doodads. And the thing about cutting is to always turn your paper instead of your scissors. It will work much better. I love this. I love doing things that are 3D. And so when I saw this jar, um, it also has, Stampin' Up! has some little shaker domes that go with it. So I'm going to show you a card that I made like that. I love to do things that have dimension and have added interest rather than just a boring little card. Well, they're not usually boring, but they need to have dimension. I think everything should have dimension. I apologize I missed uh, getting this video up last Saturday. I had procrastinated doing my taxes. And I also had procrastinated doing the bookkeeping that has to happen before I can do my taxes. So I spent all of three days catching up on my bookkeeping and then did my taxes. So that didn't, that was my whole weekend last weekend. And it had to be done. This weekend I have some more of that type stuff to do. I do bookkeeping for our neighborhood association, so I have to do that. Um, I think I'll probably do it tomorrow. And then uh, be sure and come back tomorrow, Sunday, and see week one of Susan Tootsie Tucker's Halloween collab. It's going to be lots of fun. I'm participating in that. Week one is a memory decks card. Um, week two is a shadow box. Week three is an altered picture frame. And week four is a crafter's choice. And I'm still trying to figure out what my crafter's choice is going to be. I have not decided yet. I have good ideas for the memory decks, the um, shadow box and the altered frame. So then it's figuring out how does this go. Uh, it goes like this, I believe. Ah, I need to lift it up so I can see. So I'm looking for this. This is the biggest petal. Looks like maybe that's it right there. There. So that's that. And I shall tie a bow. This is... Um, this color is one of the new in colors, and it's called Honey Bee. I keep forgetting to order the ink pads because um, they, they weren't part of our pre-order, which they usually are. I got the cardstock and the ribbon, and I don't have the ink pads yet. I'm going to add this with a glue dot. Maybe trim this a little more. These scissors are left over from when I sold Fun Stamper's Journey several years ago. See, it says enjoy the journey. The scissors are titanium, and so they never dull. I've used these on paper and ribbon for several years now. The only thing that did happen is you can see they don't close, stay closed all the way anymore. But they still cut nice. I like that because my, all my other scissors, as soon as you cut... Um, paper with them, then they don't work for fabric anymore, so they don't work for ribbon. So all I did for this, 
because I feel like I need something in the middle of that jar. So I put a little bit of glue on here. Very little because it doesn't want to come out. And then I just stuck this on here. The jar is already dimensional, so I didn't feel like I needed to bump it up again. So there is my uh, card showing you how to do two-step stamping. I think this card is really pretty. I had lots of fun making it. Um, here's another beginner trick. I didn't notice till right now. I don't know if you can see this. When you cut on your paper cutter, the bottom side has a, a lifted edge. And I didn't notice that, that that side was like that. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it and it bugs me. And the way that I fix that is with my bone folder. I just go like this and it smooths it down. So, see, it's all fixed. So that's that card. I have two other cards I'm going to show you. I'm not making them on video, but I'm going to show you. Um, this, they are all, I would consider more advanced. So I told you that there is a shaker dome for the jar. So this is the card that I made using the shaker dome. See that? I thought it would have been cool if I had some twigs or dried leaves or something to put in there, but I didn't have any. So I used fallish colors and then some little leaf sequins and it's a little jar shape. It's very cool. Um, so I stamped, this stamp set has four different flower arrangements. I stamped this one with the tulips and I colored it and cut it all out. And then I col colored, I stamped it again and cut out just the little tulips and added them on there for dimension. Use this really pretty white ribbon. And then to add my thank you, I just curled it with my bone folder. And then I put a piece of tear and tape on there and attached it. And this is the envelope that I made to go with it. This is the envelope for this one. And then... I have one more card. This card, uh, my sister also was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I went and uh, took a class that she did, not because I needed to take a class, but because I like to go do stuff like that. I think it's fun. So this is using the same the same uh, stamp set. It is colored, I should have said, this one I colored with my um, Stampin' Blends markers, and then I did Wink Estella on those flowers. This also is colored with Stampin' Blends markers, and we... Uh, there's two different floral stamps. No, there's not. There's one. Okay, so we stamped this twice. Wait a second. Oh, I just realized she tricked me. This, this flower is not from this stamp set. I was thinking it was. But we did the same thing. We stamped the jar uh, with a gray and and the stems, and then we colored them in with mint macaron, I think was the color. This ha is one of Stampin' Up's new doilies. It's a vellum doily that we put on the background. This is from the, these are both from the same paper pack. And then we used a happy birthday and some fun new ribbon. So those are the three cards, three samples I have for this one stamp set. And they're all a lot of fun. This one I would consider a beginner. Um, you could do this without punching out. You could just stamp that, all of it on this white piece and not punch out the jar. And that would make it even less work so you don't have to have the punch. Also, um, that shifted. Um, this jar is, since it has straight lines, it's very easy to, to fussy cut if you don't have the punch. And you saw how easy it was for me to cut that flower. So I think that is it for this video. I can't think of anything else to share with you uh, for this Stamping 101 video. Thank you for watching. And um, I'm thinking about, for the next few weeks, showing different ways to color. So I think that might be my beginner videos for the next couple weeks. I'm not positive because I also have a couple other things in mind. And then eventually we won't be doing beginner, we'll be in intermediate because the stamping is very basic. Um, 
and I feel like there is only so much that I consider beginner because stamping the basic stamping is like the zebra card that I did or the card I did the very first week where you're just stamping onto white cardstock um, and when you move past that you really are a little bit into intermediate and sometimes advanced depending on what you're doing I still don't consider this really advanced um, maybe that's hard to say we, I, I feel like it's blurry once you go from you're just a beginner all the rest is blurry where you changed to intermediate and then advanced um, yeah it seems like I should have another thought on that but my mind is blank I can't think um, I, there is more to say about that, but I can't think right now what it is. So that's it for today. If there are things, I may have already said this, if there are things you would like to learn, um, please put them in the comments below and I will be happy to add them to my list. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.